negative camber, and that sidecar passing here goes to the right, over on the top of that sidecar wheel, but the head almost brushing the bank as they come out of almost full cover of trees back into the sunlight. On the sidecar outfit, just a little bit of air, and right on board now with the Crow Brothers down Frank Hill. Have a listen to that engine scream. Lovely. Into the rev limiter as the rear tyre comes off the ground over Ago's leg. So this is the first braking zone. It's steep downhill. It goes round to the left and then you come down and you've got your first right-handed corner. Now, Cam, normally we're talking about tyres here and whether or not the right-hand side of the tyre, obviously it's your first right, is not heated up when you're on a solo. Side car, we've got three tyres and it's all a bit different. Very different indeed. And the pressure under braking, those side cars, all three wheels brake. So enormous amount of pressure on both the right tyres for about the last 10 years are on a Hoosier tyre this year. That is uh, Todd Ellis and Emmanuel Clement heading off the Now in the background there you can see already Ryan and Callum Crow closing down on Pete the Fountain Jeff and Wolsey. I say closing down, they leave at 10 second intervals like they're doing the solo and you can see that's not 10 now, probably half a gap down to 5 already. Yeah, that'll be spurring the Crow brothers on, that's incredible. I did not expect them to make that much time off on Pete Fountain Jeff and Wolsey. Yeah, fantastic performance. So they're hunting for that win, aren't they? Three podiums. They know as well, obviously, with Ben Burton and Kevin Rousseau missing, that it's a great opportunity for them as Reeves and Wilkes come through. Yeah, another pairing that are no strangers to the podium. Class act. On board with Dave Molyneux and Jake Roberts. Dave Molyneux, of course, the living legend, seven times Sidecar TT winner. His passenger this year, just 20-year-old Jake Roberts. Absolutely fantastic, a lot for him to learn, I'm sure. And how much could young Jake learn from a driver as experienced as Dave Molyneux? Absolutely. Steve Ramsden and Matthew Ramsden coming through. Fantastic livery on that. Oh, and the gap's closed. Lee Crawford, Scott Hardy. That young Perry closing the gap to those ahead already. So on board now with Dave Molyneux. Oh, he's pulled no. off the side of the road, so it didn't sound quite on full song when we saw him see him back on form in time for a sidecar race too late on the week. We're now into the Glen Helen section. Oh, just floating that sidecar wheel through that left-hand bend. We should talk a bit, uh, Cam, about the fact Virtual's not here, and that's why the Crows, of course, are, are so keen to... to really get a lick on and put their mark on this race. They were they were challenging the Virtual Brothers last year. Ben Virtual, of course, has now got a new passenger in Kevin Rousseau because uh, Tom Virtual's joined the, the TT Plus commentary team. He's not, he doesn't want a passenger around anymore. I think that's fair with the number of wins they have. Absolute TT legends. But Ben wants to carry on. Unfortunately, him and Kevin, mechanical failure during practice week. Yeah, absolutely bad luck. I was just chipping away, going incredibly quick, considering that Kevin has very little experience as a passenger around the TT, although a world championship winning passenger prior to coming here. Uh, they had a mechanical failure that caused them to end up off-road up near Mount Box. Fast place for it to happen, but fortunately they are okay. Yeah, that is the most important thing. The outfit needed a bit more work. Kevin needed to rest his foot for a couple of days, so they're confident they'll be back, and uh, they've had some great help around the paddock as well. Look at this. This is our first chance to take a really close look all of these mouldings around underneath the passenger's feet are oh, now really close, so that's Crawford and Hardy have caught up with the Ramsdens. Yeah, up past, past Sarah's cottage here, I'd say they'd be looking to try to slipstream past down Crocker Body straight. Everything is so bespoke on these camps, you know, the, 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 exactly where they're gripping on. A minute ago we could see as well this, from the heli, the Fountain Walmsley, there's a, there's a moulding to, so that the passenger's lid can get tucked right into the arrow, so a dip in the side of the fairing so they can get in, it's just incredible. It certainly is. Now we are on body straight, as I thought. I thought that would be the spot they'd do it. Nice, clean pass. Oh, but hold your breath for that right-hand crest at the end of Crocker body straight. That really is a very, very daunting turn. This is the bottom of uh, Bagaro. The big dip compression through there now with Reeves and Wilkes. Absolutely screaming the 600. Cam, we were talking yesterday and I've had a couple of questions come in about why don't they use 1,000 cc engines in the sidecars and it's actually pretty simple. Yeah, correct. It's really safety. 600 Supersport powered engines or Supersport class 
engines just to control the outright speed of these outfits around the course. It is fast enough. Now then, Founds and Wormsley. What a crows. They've closed the gap and you wonder, I would say by now that Founds and Wormsley will know that they have the crows closing down on their tail. If you look at the leaderboard, you can see 9.4 seconds is the gap, so they're just 0.6 back. They started 10 seconds back, and the leaderboard, of course, shows you their time out of course. So they are leading, even though they're not first on the road. They've closed that 10 second gap down. Look at this. Callum Crow, like an acrobat, twisting, flying his body oh, through, into the thick of the past. Their outfit has been very fast through the speed trap all week, and with that slipstream, they're blasted on past on their way in the quarry bend. Did you hear the limiter? Yeah. Yep. yep. Spinning up just as it goes like. Coming down now. And the Solby straight. And the Solby straight indeed up past Ginger Hall. Now we're into without doubt the most technical and bumpy part of the course. Look at how much it's so the passengers hanging off the left hand side now through the right hand. When they go the other way, you'll see them put the weight over the other side of the machine. Ellison Clement coming up to Black Bridge. Yeah on their way to their first ever TT Psycho Racing You ride on board with Ryan and Callum Crow, leading on the timesheets and now leading on the road, having made a pass on Founds and Wormsley, but Founds and Wormsley look are still right there. They're looking to come back. Now it's their turn to get the slipstream coming down this straight. Look at that. You see the inside wheel lift off from the sidecar outfit. They're tucked right in. We saw in the solo race, people passing back, even though they're 10 seconds ahead. We got, I think we might see the same here again. Oh, they're coming in. This is Schoolhouse Corner on the way to Parliament Square. We're just about to complete Sector 3. Is he going to have a look up the inside here? Oh, they're late on the brakes. Really late. And they do. So Bounds and Walsing back inside. up the inside. They run wide, though. And in the background, the Crows get the grip back on the inside. Better traction on the exit and blast back into the lead. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Reminding of we, I mean, what we saw in that super sport race between Jamie Coward and Dean, Dean Harrison. Dean Harrison, yeah. Generally, when a competitor makes up 10 seconds and passes, whoever's been passed will be happy to sit behind, but not so in the case here. Absolutely fantastic. Lifting wheels again through the left hand and right into Ramsey. Tucked in, look, foot up in the air, hanging off the inside through Stella Maris. The Crows are almost on a defensive line up into the hairpin there. Now they come out wide and take the right line. Behind, Founds and Walsley. She's only over halfway through our first lap and already we have a race on our hands. Absolutely brilliant. I'm still in awe of the passengers camp every single time we see it. Look, you see the grip tape around the handles here. Look at the toes just barely touching on. A little bit of grip tape across the back of the carbon fibre tray. The handle you can see bottom left of your screen. And watch for their toes when you're on board. You'll see they are millimetres from the road. Here's another look at that pass. So, look, looking across, it's uh, Crow, Callum Crow looks across. He can't believe that they're coming back up the inside. But Fountain Wolves just seem to let off the brake and carry a bit more speed in. It had just gone in hot. Oh, lucky to keep it off the barrier. And it was up the inside, round the outside, back up the inside. Absolutely fantastic. Here comes Reeves and Wilkes. Looks very sedate when they're just on their own there, doesn't it? That's what we just saw before. Only someone who's won on a sidecar, sorry, on a superbike round there could say it looks sedate, but I know exactly what you mean. It, you, you, it's what we said in the solo race as well. You can focus on what you're doing when you're not in a battle. When you're in a battle, you're looking at they're coming back past. You don't want to lose time, so I'm sure the Crows now will want to check out from Pounds and Wormsley, but at the minute, they're only a couple of tenths of a second behind when we last saw them. Uh, P3 at the minute is uh, Reeves and Wilkes. They're 18 seconds back on Pounds and Wormsley, so... This is really a two outfit race at the front of say with 10 seconds you, you think that the Crows have got this nicely under control but three laps to go Cam and these machines can be a bit fragile as well. Oh, that is Holden and Clays being passed by Blackstock and Rosney. Wow, as they find their way in, the Guthrie's here making their way up onto the mountain mile. Cam, they don't have the same track width that a solo bike has. You know, a solo bike is, is obviously cranked over, takes up a bit of road. But in, in terms of standing upright width, you can see here that they're probably three times the width of a solar machine. The racing line is the same, but it's less road, which is why actually the passing was even more impressive. Yeah, it's incredible. I can't imagine how hard it would be to pass on a sidecar outfit because it's hard enough on a solo, especially when you were trying to see the road ahead with so many blind twists and turns. Look at this. Look, reaching down for that low grip, hanging literally as much of your weight off, now getting tucked in. And there, this is what I was talking about. So there is, there's a, there is a divot, a dip in the side of the fairing there to allow 
The passenger's helmet to sit right in and get the best possible feet down the straights. Yeah, streamlining's got a lot to do with going fast in these outfits. Rings and Wilkes. Oh, yeah. in that inside wheel. That's that's when it blows my mind. Yeah, it looks a it. fantastic show pony too. We'll always lift the wheel at every chance. Very experienced competitors. Free try TT winner and world champion. Have you tried one, Cam? Side car? I have. <laughs> yeah, on a on a on a road circuit. But on a closed course, yes, I have had a go, and it certainly gave me an unbelievable appreciation for what these riders and passengers go through. Have you had a crack at passenger or only a rider? No, rider. Just, just a rider. You didn't fancy the passenger, though. No. <laughs> That's a hard no from Cam. Well, I actually can't lie there. I did passenger for about three laps of a 1.2 mile course, and I tapped out. <laughs> that was it. Game over. It was too bumpy for me, so that's what's given me the appreciation for what the passengers endure around here. Look at the foot hanging down here underneath. You can just see the toes of the passenger, depending on the position they're sitting. And again, in the middle here, Cam, just the toes hanging down off the back of the outfit. Outrageous. Incredible as we watch it. Outfits here making their way up Harwood Heights. Jesus, so many have caught each other on road here. It looks like it's going to get busy. That's Fowles and Gibbons there in the 10 machine. Yeah, that's a really cool partner in that Alan Founds with his nephew, Reese Gibbons, who's a newcomer passenger this year. So the Ramsdale's brother's outfit is not sounding too hot there. And we go back to the Crows now, and they're at Governor's Dip. So this has been a good first lap. It's great to see what pace they're on. Remember, we had a lap record last year in sidecar. Yeah, the 120 mile an hour mark was eclipsed. We never thought we'd see that eclipse, and it was by the Virtuals, and also then later by Pete Founds and Evan Walton. It's a brilliant start then for Ryan and Callum Crow as they come round to complete the first lap of the first sidecar encounter at the TT 2024. Tucked right in, back down Bray Hill. Can they hold on and take their first ever victory on the Isle of Man? TT. This is only, heading into this race, Andrew, they'd only completed 10 race laps around the course. Absolutely incredible. They did such a good job last year, and obviously leading now, brilliant first lap, couple of passes up in Ramsey, into the lead, and then uh, they lost the lead on the way back into Ramsey, and, and back in again on the edge. Literally one corner, wasn't it? Fantastic between them. Reeves and Wilkes. Moment that Crow Brothers made their debut, they've been so quick, always improving, but thinking just a, sh a few short years, they're now potentially looking at their first TT victory. But we don't want to speak too soon. Let's look at the amount of sideways in the corner, and it's such a different sideways, isn't it, than you get on a solo machine. Alison Clement, this world championship pairing. I think people would expect that the world sidecar champions would come here and need to be on the pace, but it's a great indicator, and they are, they're, they're, you know, they're doing well, but it is a great indicator of how specialist this event is. Yeah, absolutely, and I believe they're running a reasonably stock tune of engine, just for reliability this year is about Get the which way they go, but boy, that's an exciting partnership for the future, isn't it? Look how smooth they look. They look, they look on the exit, lovely, and you know, compare that to the sideways a minute ago, there's no doubt that they'll be able to, to get there. I, I, I love the fact they're willing to come here with the reputation as world champions to come here and do something and go, this is a learning year, we know we're not going to win it this year, we're going to crack on. Exactly, and learning they are. Literally every single lap they are going out, that pairing are improving their lap speed. From the heli, great shots of Ellison Clement again. Look at Clement tucked right in. Can't even imagine what would be going through your mind as a passenger in your first ever TT sidecar race. I'm always fascinated as well, Cam, like there, you can see she's reaching up to grab the handle on the inside because she knows the next section's coming up where she's got to move to the other side of the bike, but you, you've got to know the course instinctively because you can't look up and check where you are. You, you're having a crack at and then a little glimpse, this is where I need to sit up. Yeah, and if you move at the wrong time, you can either get pinned in a position you can't move or flung off the back end. Yeah, wild. Breaking hard down to Black Bridge. Reeves and Wilkes in. Less of a hop there. You don't want to put too much strain on the drivetrain. Heavier machine, you know, more chance of uh, breaking something. Yeah, absolutely. 
Lee Crawford, Scott Hardy going very well. Lee Crawford only had two previous starts here at the TT in 2022. Missed last year, couldn't find a passenger. Back again and going incredibly well for such a limited amount of experience. Just look at the speed traps, Cam. 158 for the Crow Brothers. Nobody else talking 150. So they're doing something very right with the tune on the bike and the position they're sitting in to, to limit the drag and, and get the most out of these 600 cc engines. That's very impressive because nearly all the front running outfits are running Honda Super Sport motors, but theirs is definitely quicker than nearly everyone else. Topping the speed trap all week in practice also. Another look on board. Now the other thing I think is worth noting here, Cam, is that the position for the driver is so much lower in terms of looking down the road. When you're on a solo bike, let's say you're sitting at what three, four feet off the ground. These guys, it's about two feet. So you the forward visibility is a lot less in terms of what you can see in the distance. Yeah, absolutely. And the position too, you know, they're lying down on the bike, aren't they, with their legs going backwards. It's really hard to explain to people unless you can see an outfit. Yeah, it's so, so hard on the body. It's so difficult for both the driver and the passenger to brace themselves as the sidecar continually to, to, to move around, kicking left, right, left, right. You see it there through the bumps in Ramsey. On onto the limiter again. They are tramping on, really, really pushing hard. Wow, they're pushing, being egged on by the crowd. But these outfits, again, super sport engine, Sideways again, Cam, through Stella Maris. That is high-speed stuff up into the hairpin. Go on, you were saying the engine. They spend most of the lap full throttle. In fact, over 70% 70, 70 of the lap and 100% throttle. On a superbike, it's less than 30%. Flipping the throttle down the way down. There's the air intake on the side of the fairing. Look, the wheels on these things, it's so strange the way they're laid out, isn't it? They don't, nothing really lines up with anything. They often look like they're going sideways down the road, almost cramming. No, they're incredibly unique, and that's what makes them so amazing. Foot off the side there. Tim Reeves just glancing down with his passenger Tim Wilkes there, checking on something maybe. And now onto the uphill section where they really are having to use every single CC to the max. Yep. They start off with 35 odd litres of fuel, very heavy on fuel, so as the laps count down, shedding a lot of weight makes a big difference to the handling of the outfit each lap. And of course you've got rider and passenger cam, I mean, I'm guessing they're smaller than me, so, but you're still looking at 70 odd kilos for some of the passengers I reckon. Yeah, absolutely, you're looking at near 400 kilograms for the complete outfit with two rider passenger outfit combined. A little head shake there from the passenger. Yeah, maybe there's an issue. What a fantastic place to stand and watch. Seeing so many people on the banks in the hedges this week. TT's popularity growing. Yeah, there's a very experienced pairing indeed there. John Holden, previous TT winner. His passenger, Frank Lays. Passenger not experienced, John is. Full arm extension there, Cam. You know, hanging off. You're limited by how much you can, you know, how far across you can reach. Yes. Ellison Clement again up into the hairpin. What a place to come and learn. You stick them on a short circuit anywhere in the world, you expect them to immediately, you know, give them a couple of sessions and be bang on the pace. But you know yourself, Cam, how many times, how many laps did you do around here to get your head around where 37.73 miles of twisting mountain roads and, and, and lanes, to be fair, some of it looks like? How do you learn this place? You continue to learn. You apply yourself to the course and you never stop working. You never stop learning. Different conditions. 24, you're looking at Mark Wilkes, who is passenger to Tim Reeves, about to go under the bridge at St. Ninian's. There it is, and down Bray Hill. Oh, look at his oh. hand there, constantly moving, re-gripping. He's grasping on that grab handle. Through that big compression, then over the big crest at Agos. Imagine coming down there the whole way and not taking a glimpse once up over the fairing. Uh, I'm in awe, I really am. It's something I can't imagine. Here are your leaders, the Crow Brothers. After setting a sensational 119.8, will they get two flying laps? Will they will they consolidate for what looks set to be their first TT victory? Or will they keep their head down and try to eclipse the 120 mile per hour mark? On board with Holden and Clace as we see Ellison Clement come through. Cam, they've passed quite a few outfits now to be at this position on the road. They certainly have. They just keep improving this pairing. What a sensational finish they're set to get in their debut. 
TT Sidecar Race. Bounds and Wormsley running P2. Actually been P2, haven't they? The last three outings, the second race of 22. Both races last year. Must be frustrating, but also, you know, great to know you're, you're on the pace and you're capable of it. They just need that one little extra step. Well, there's nothing to be ashamed of in second no. place of the TT, but it looks like this pairing is set to be the bridesmaids again, unless the Crow boys have issues on this final lap. That's the thing, is it now for the Crows? Do, do you go for the lap record? Yeah, of course you want it. Of course you want to hit the 120, but what they will want more than anything is to get the wind monkey off their back. Once you take your one win, it, you've done it. And it, it, it's a, a relief of the pressure. They're coming through Glen Helen now. Look, everything looks smooth. The gap is 30 seconds, so in theory you could risk it, but he has a problem with the outfit and it's game over. It's all gone. A wise man once said, win the race at the slowest possible pace, but all these young lads get excited by the moment. Only time will tell. Sounds and Wormsley still pressing on. Yeah, yeah, not spinning the rear up quite so much now. now and we saw it on Cape of last year. I say again, the only other team apart from the virtual sort of clips the 120 mile an hour mark, but things obviously aren't working well enough to do those times for these boys today. Yeah, they did this, didn't they, last, was it in the second, I think it was in the second sidecar race last year. It was, yeah, 120.08 pounds and warms is what they did in 2023. Correct, as we see here, Lee Crawford, Scott Hardy, they're going fantastic here. Such a great pairing, and this is potentially going to be only their second ever TT finish. So what an exciting moment for those lads. Brilliant. The finishes are so important, and then with that comes the confidence. You get a finish with good speed as well. Everything starts to come together, and you take those big steps. More with Fountain Wormsley. Look, left leg forward, right leg back into those grip positions. See the little carpet fiber L shape as well. When they're hanging off the side like this, it's actually in the back of the knee, so it allows you to almost grip it with the fold of your knee. Bottom of the garrow. Tell you what, the outfits and their riders would be getting tired by now. Third lap, no pit stop. Late in the day as well, Ooh, that was so close to the curve. Curve. Yeah, that was so close. Late in the day with delays earlier on, so you can see a lot of shadow over the road. That gives you a strobing effect when you go along, which is not easy. And also with temperatures dropping quite quickly at the end of the day, the track of, you know, the road surface of the course is not in the sun everywhere. No, correct. There's all things I have to deal with. Bit of a tear up going on here through Glen Helen. Yes, yeah, Steve and Matty Ramston. Being closely followed by Daryl Gibson and Tom Christie. On board with Reeves and Wilkes again. Now the Ramston brothers, they did well last year, just narrowly missed the podium with a fourth, so they're another team that are really coming on strong. Full RPM, there's that strobing effect that we were talking about, and the battering that they're taking. You can understand why I say we, uh, there was some work, some serious work to do on uh, Ben Bertrand and Kevin Rousseau's Honda LCR outfit. Um, they were actually got some great help with the fairing, didn't they, Cam? They found an expert on, on composite in the in the paddock to get the fairing repaired, and we're hoping to see them. But also, Kevin Rousseau's ankle, he needed to rest it. And I think we can understand why when you see the passengers and see the amount of the amount of leverage they're putting on their ankles to hold in position, if Rousseau isn't fit, you just can't do this, regardless of whether the outfit would have been ready or not. Couldn't imagine doing it fit, let alone injured. Yeah, Francesco Caringa. A brilliant super twin pilot around the TT course himself, racing for Ian Locker Racing, and a successful Manx GP rider. He is actually a composite expert. That's he so assisted good. the team with uh, with repairing that bodywork. So how cool is it to see the TT paddock come together to get contenders back out on course? Two days of work he's been already to get that bearing back. I, I have to say, Cam, I love the idea of seeing Virtual and Rousseau come back for race two. Assuming Rousseau is fit, and of course they found the parts they need for the outfit, it could be a hell of a battle now. You feel like the Crows have stepped up to that kind of pace. The new tyres as well, you know, could they be a bit quicker? Might we look at a lap record in, in the second in the second race this week? I'm yeah. excited for it. Who knows, who knows? It's almost unimaginable to think that uh, Birchall and Rousseau could come back after that incident earlier in the week. It'd be fantastic if they do. Look at the crowds, fist pumping. As they see the leaders coming through, they know what's at stake here. There'll be plenty of Banksy's down those rails. Over those about walls. now, those two boys, they'll be talking to that machine now. They'll be saying, please, just get us home. 
just get us home, just bring us up over the mountain one more time. We'll let you rest, we'll give you an oil change. Yeah. Just <laughs> bring us to that checkered flag. We'll get you tidied up for race two. Can also back from the passengers, give it a light tap on the side, can't you? Come on, come on, get us there. Yeah, the boys are obviously still trying, but I'd say looking at that body language, they've consolidated now and they're just try trying to bring it home fast but smooth. I don't think they're going for an outright lap record at this stage. Sounds it warms the two wheeling as they come through Ramsey up towards uh, Della Maris and then the hairpin. No, certainly still looking every bit as quick as the lap previous. Very consistent this pairing. You can see their body position, their road position. It's really carbon copy the lap before. It goes to show how experienced they are. Brings in Wilkes. Wilkes with the hands right down over the side of the ground. And then there's that foot off the left side again that we've seen a few times. Power off going off the visor there too. Oh, so bumpy on the way up Mayhill. And then up through Stella Maris next. This is the new camera that we got the previous corner to Stella Maris. I love this. We, we mentioned in the solo race, it shows you how much of a climb it is up to around. You're already really climbing towards the mountain by now. Yeah, very much so. Just above sea level. Down yeah, here in Parliament Square, right up to 1,400 feet up the mountain. So here is the battle for P3. That is Lewis Blackstock and Patrick Rosney on the 9. And behind them, Alan Founds and Reese Gibbons on the 10. So obviously they've closed the 10 seconds down. Between them, the gap is not a lot. And this is for the last podium space in this, uh, this first sidecar encounter. Yeah, Blackstock and Rosney, they've never been on the podium. They have a P4. But of course, Alan Founds has been on the podium. But Reese Gibbons, his newcomer sidecar passenger, has not. Well, that'd be an incredible result, wouldn't it? Especially for a newcomer. They can just sit tight now, Cam. They've made up that 10 seconds. You know, can follow them home, really, and not take any risks. Yeah, that'll be another pairing that'll be talking to the outfit, that's for sure, as we see the Crows just counting down the miles. If you look at the top of their helmets as they come through, that is the famous Manx Triskelly in the three legs, which is on the Manx flag. Proud Manxman. And I think that's what all this support is about. There will be fans out there supporting the manoeuvre, but there was more support for them coming through Ramsey than we saw for Dunlop in the solo race. People are going mad for this. It would be an incredible result. It truly is a huge moment for the Crow brothers. Their father, Nick, is a very successful TT competitor himself. Five wins, five second places, and now his two lads looking set to repeat history. Incredible stuff. Founds and Wormsley been another brilliant performance today but it's all about these two the crow brothers the last time there was a manx win on the island was dave moller in 2014 the last time it was a pair of manx win was 2009 it is a first tt win for ryan and callum crow at home what a brilliant result their whole family the whole island will be proud of them amazing riding with a level of skill and speed well beyond their years so the Crows come back down the road to return to the paddock. Huge crowd look in the fan park already. And we ride on board with Pete Founds and Jevon Warms. It's another P2. It's four P2s in a row, which just goes to show how brilliant these guys are around this incredibly tough island course. And they've got one more opportunity later this week to try and go on better and get on that top step of the podium. There we go then, Ryan and Cal Crow with their first ever win. Founds and Wolfley in P2 with Founds and Gibbons in P3. Gibbons, the fastest ever newcomer passenger. Ellis in P7, the fastest ever newcomer. Ryan and Callum Crow, you are TT winners. How does that feel in this moment? They're like superstars, yeah. it's the best thing that could ever happen to me in life, except we I saw mean, I can't do that, but yeah, TT winners, follow, like, my dad as well, following him, now I know why he does it, why he did it anyway, it's amazing. It was incredible scenes when you came in, your dad jumped on top of you, Callum, how was that? I don't know how he jumped on top of me, but he did it, <laughs> yeah, no, it was amazing, I, I, felt, I, I don't know what he was feeling or what it was like out of the circuit, the man was in Ireland yesterday and we managed to get him over here, so... Yeah, it was mega. I mean, I just want to say a big thanks to all the fans out there. It was it was absolutely great, and uh, all the sponsors. That we got the best team on the, in the paddock, and that's that's it. 
And this is only your fourth TT, and you're actually the first Manxman to come onto the podium since Dave Molyneux. It, does that give you an insight to the future? It's a, good, it's a good insight, isn't it? I suppose you can't, he's a legend in himself, so I'm following Dave's footsteps, I suppose. Well, you can now go and enjoy this podium as winners. Congratulations. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Pete Fowler.